welcome back to the three-hour news show on C today, and you are still in our signature segment, See the Stories. Now, before we go any further, I would like to ask my co-host right here, mm -hmm. um, what comes up to your mind when uh, when you hear the word games that can stimulate children? Sensory games. Same. What about you? My daughter's not gonna play that game. Hmm? My daughter's not gonna play that game. So what? But she's she much like? older. Yeah. No, but like even like when she was younger, it's like every time we were trying to her like play with like what sand or. Really? No, it's it's icky. Oh no, <laughs> really? So what did she like back then? You too, <laughs> Miss Rachel. <laughs> oh yeah, I wish I knew that by then. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Um, it's, it's really, it, it does, uh, my, my daughter actually didn't like it in the beginning, but uh, I didn't give her an option. <laughs> <laughs> Strike mother yes. right here. Tiger mom, are you? No, 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 no okay. not tiger mom. Well, speaking of which, one of the types of media which might be perfect for children is kinetic sand. Agreed. That is actually one of my daughter's absolute favorites. Kinetic sand is a moldable, squishy material that feels like wet beach sand. The difference is it will not become dry and it is composed of 98% regular sand and 2% polydimethyl siloxane, which is a type of silicone oil. And this gives kinetic sand a unique texture which makes it flow like liquid upon touch but retain its shape when molded. The silicone oil reduces friction between sand particles which allow them to slide past each other easily. This makes kinetic sand a fun and satisfying material to play with since it makes them almost fluid. Kinetic sand is generally considered safe for kids and adults alike since it's non-toxic and hypoallergenic. It is also free of gluten, casein and wheat. However, this does not mean that users can ingest <laughs> Kinetic sand intentionally, no, no, sand is still not ingestible, yeah? Since any small particle may still pose as a choking hazard. Now, additionally, supervision is recommended for younger kids. Kinetic sand is popular as it encourages creativity and fine motor skills. It can also be used in therapy due to its calming nature. I agree. And I think the, the reason why it's also so important is because the texture. Uh, when children familiarize with texture in their hands, you start as early as possible. It actually helps with uh, developing uh, later when they start eating. But, but do you think it's ideal for younger kids, as you know, we mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. that it, it's, we cannot ingest that, right? Mm -hmm. Well, while a children in their early age, they're in this phase called oral phase. Yeah, right? where they put everything in. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess mm, it depends on the age. You can't go too early. Yeah, maybe um, above three years old? No, 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 no. Uh, one and a half is already okay. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Because my daughter started at uh, one years old, one and a half. Uh, before that, I always use like jelly or edible things. Have you heard so. of Oobleck? It's very popular in schools, like early childhood education. It's just a cornstarch mixed with water yes. wow. and some food coloring. It's yeah, yeah, really yeah. safe. When you when you put pressure, like, it's like play doh, like, right? It's like it's no. not like play doh. Or so like it's like a uh, liquid. Slime. But then when you grab it, it becomes um, solid, almost solid. And then when you uh, stop giving movement to it, it will become liquid again. Ah, uh, interesting. What is it called again? Oobleck. It's O O B L E C K. Oobleck. Oobleck. Yeah. All right, well, well, what else do we have? Well, the speaking sensory of sensory, sensory toys have gained a lot of popularity recently because they're designed to stimulate uh, multiple senses of the child. One of the most notable sensory toys is clay -Doh, where they are squishy, easily moldable, and have a number of benefits for a child development. Molding clay dough works wonders when it comes to developing a child's motor skill. Simple actions such as squishing, rolling, and flat Flattening the clay dough helps strengthen a child's small hands and fingers. It also builds strength in the arms, back, and shoulder when rolling the clay dough. Clay dough also stimulates imagination and creativity. Children create objects from scratch, which encourage them to test their imaginations as well as explore new and innovative ways when playing with dough. This gives them a sense of achievement and enhances their imagination through pretend play. Store-bought clay can be expensive, but it is easy to make them at home with ingredients such as flour, salt, 
warm water, vegetable oil, and food coloring to make it more vibrant. It is also more safe for children. Making homemade clay can also build deeper bond between parents and the children. And you might can eat that. That's yes, yes, yeah. it's safe too. <laughs> I, although it doesn't taste good. Yeah, <laughs> I actually make it myself at home. All right. Like I, I stock uh, food coloring for this particular purposes. Yeah. If not this, then I use jelly. You know the save the creatures yeah, or yeah. save the oh, marble or whatever. That was my oh. child's favorite. Yeah, I yeah. put like dino little figures. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And I would make it myself, uh, or, or using actually a wheat as well or something like that. You can mm. you can leave it in the fridge, and the children will learn how to do lots of different. There's lots of different things that you can do. Yeah. Nowadays we can pretty much make everything from scratch. Yeah. We we don't have to opt for the store bought ones because in the era of social media, every tutorial is out there. All you have to do is click and just follow. It. DIY. <laughs> DIY Hardcore DIY. I'm just lazy. <laughs> <laughs> Very honest of you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Moving on to another activity is finger painting. Have you taught your children to finger paint? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> because we're not lazy parents. We're yeah. we're so <laughs> Yeah, we're, we're so So we it. we actually use uh, I I use cornstarch paint. Thanks, girl! <laughs> When, when, when Kamala was before two years old, I used cornstarch and um, vibrant food coloring just mm -hmm. in case, you know, yeah. She puts it in her mouth. Yeah, she puts it in her mouth. So finger painting can be, make a little bit of a mess in your house, but it should be okay, right? This activity has plenty of benefits for your children. Let's take a look. So finger painting is a painting or drawing activity using fingers as the brush. Children are free to draw whatever they want or follow a pattern to form a specific image with their own fingers. Not only fun, this activity can be a good form of stimulation for children to explore, learn, and develop. Finger painting also has several benefits such as strengthening the children's fingers, developing their creativity, training motor skills, and many more. Now, parents, however, must pay attention to choosing non-toxic paints that are safe if swallowed accidentally. But that wouldn't be a problem for us because we Point make starch. our own. Oh, and there's one interesting fact about finger painting. If you uh, take a closer look at schools, like early childhood education, they usually only provide children with three colors, which are the primary colors, red, um, yellow, yellow, and okay. blue. And there's a specific reason behind that. It's uh, th so that children can find on their own the secondary colors. So yeah. when, they, when they play with their fingers, you know, mix it red, uh, and then they put another one with yellow, it will form, of course, orange color, right? Mm. And they, they, they find it on their own. Yeah. So that's the reason why. Yeah. So I think it's really it's really good to stay with the homemade until the child reach, like, reaches like one and a half and two years old. Mm -hmm. Because then, by then, they already understand that this is not consumable. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, another one, uh, we have this uh, form of play called building blocks. It's for children to develop their motor skills. Mm. Now this is Kamala's absolute favorite since baby. Building blocks offer significant benefits for young children, which can enhance their socio-emotional, cognitive skills and physical motor development. Children develop fine motor skills, understand cause and effect, and improve math skills by mm -hmm. stacking blocks. The creative aspect of block play also boosts special, special abilities and self-confidence. Collaborative block play promotes social skills as children learn to listen, discuss, and share ideas. Parents can support these benefits by encouraging creativity, providing guidance, ensuring safety, and fostering responsibility by having children tidy up the blocks when they are finished playing. Overall, building blocks are a powerful tool for holistic child development. And they come in different kinds, right? Different kinds. I mean, we have Legos, we have also the wooden blocks that yeah. has no, what do you call it? No attachments. Uh, no attachments. Yeah. And one interesting fact I found from my child's school mm -hmm. when he was younger is that the uh, block center, we call it in the yeah. school, is like the foundation to teach the children not to be a corrupt, not to do corruption when they are older. You know why? Because um, it has no attachment, right? The wooden block. Mm -hmm. You have to be so precise so that yeah. the structure is very secure. Mm -hmm. You cannot have like... Oh, you can't it, cheat. It's okay. It's yeah. okay. <laughs> you yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh, it's really good. It's math foundation, you know, mm -hmm. social skills, things like that. Yeah, I mean... Um, so many benefits. There, uh, We also have the magnetic tiles, right? 
Oh, yes, right. it's called magnetile. Have yeah, you heard? magnetiles. Yeah, yeah. So my, my daughter has the magnetic tiles as well, and she loves them because she can make a train. Because <laughs> yeah. they attach to it, so you can like. Beep, beep. <laughs> it, it could be frustrating though for younger kids because yeah. uh, it's easily it can get easily collapse, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When, when so you... the blocks are better for younger. Yeah, kids. exactly. So what are the most memorable toys when you were a child that you passed down to your kids? Oh, passed down. Hmm. Oh, I remember a uh, Polly Pocket. Polly Pocket, yeah, yeah. That's a toy, right? Yeah, yeah. But I, I, I didn't give That's it to it. my children because my child, because he's a boy. Oh. I mean, I have all the yeah, girls' yeah, yeah. stuff, <laughs> so. Yeah, that was really memorable because you can pretend play. That's true, Polly Pocket. Mm -hmm. But that's not a choke hazard for a little kids. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's like, I even still would like Polly Pocket like, at <laughs> my age. Hmm. What about you? you? What about you? Um, Lego. I mean, if, yeah. if they don't want to pass down. Although, like, remember, uh, like, you know, that this, the cutout for like, Little girls with like dresses where you mix and match. Like, uh, yeah, I do have oh, that. Paper one. Little... Yes. Yeah. <laughs> She actually sure. played that for quite a little bit, so that was kind of interesting. I was like, oh, we're yeah. bringing this back oh. again. Mm. It means Lego as well. All right. Well, with that, see the stories will continue after the break. Stay with us.